Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining our service online. I'm Wes, one of the leaders here at the Slade Church. Now today is a very special Sunday um, for a couple of reasons. At the beginning of February, we're going to start this mini series for the whole month on this glorious subject of prayer. Why pray? What to pray about? How to pray? When to pray? And we're going to be looking at it all especially through the life and example of Jesus. Now, related to that today, because in a sense, the sermon today will just be setting up the theme for the month, because it's also linked to this wonderful day. We're going to celebrate it this morning and this evening. It's going to be the commissioning service for Mark and Natalie. Mark and Natalie are being sent out by us as a church family. We'll be focusing on that this morning. There'll be a number of different things. And then especially this evening as well on our Zoom service. But let's begin by getting our gaze and our hearts right by worshipping Almighty God in song. After that, Anita will lead us in prayer before it's over to Andy for our children's talk.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne this morning to praise you, adore you, and worship you. You are our King, and nothing can compare to you. We ask that you bless your son who will be bringing the word this morning to us. Help him to speak your word with grace and power. We also pray that you prepare our hearts to receive your word. Lord, we ask, O oh God, that you keep us humble and to focus on your word throughout the service. We adore you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hi boys and girls, hi grown-ups, my name is Andy. We are doing a series called Big Bible Questions. And we're starting to think about who God is. And today we're going to think about where God is. Have you ever thought about that? Where is he? Is he here? Is he there? Where is he? Well, the Bible tells us. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens... You're there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. The Bible tells us that God made everything just by speaking. Every part of the world every drop of water, every centimetre of land, every bit of sky, every star in space, God made. And so he's bigger than it. He's more powerful than it. He's more amazing than it. And he can be in every part of it at the same time. So if you go on holiday somewhere really hot and sunny, do you remember those? Let's just take a moment. Holidays. God is right there. He's still there. Miles away from your home, he's right there. If you could go down to the bottom of the deepest sea, God would be there. If you could go right out to space, God is there too. There's nowhere that we can hide from God. Even in the dark, God is there. He can still see just as if it was like daylight. Now sometimes when we want to do something naughty, when we want to do something wrong, we go off, don't we? We try and do it in secret. We try and do it when no one is watching, like it's in the dark, thinking no one can see. But the Bible tells us God is still there. He can see just as much as if he was standing right next to us. But the good news is that God sent his son Jesus, didn't he, into the world to come and not just be near us, but to save us, to rescue us from the things we do wrong. So now, if we do things wrong, we can pray to him and he will forgive us. We don't need to feel God's anger because Jesus has taken it for us. And we can just feel loved and known by God all because of Jesus. So it's a great thing that God is near. Maybe when you're worried or scared, God is near. Maybe when people are being nasty to you in the playground, God is near. Maybe when you're lost and you can't find your mum and dad, God is near. Guys, let us celebrate God's nearness today. Today, we are saying uh, kind of goodbye to some people at church, to Mark and Natalie and Hannah and Amelia. And we're going to be sad to see them go, but they are going to tell people the good news about Jesus 
in another part of the world. A part of the world where they're probably going to have to wear sunglasses. It's very hot. And, um, and they might have to wear sun hats. But they're going there because they want to tell people about Jesus in another country. What a fantastic thing. So we're going to miss them lots, but we're really excited to hear how God is going to use them. So we're going to pray for them now. Are you ready? In Jesus' name, I pray that Hannah and Amelia will make good friends. I pray that I pray that they have a good time there. I pray for God's protection. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Why well, we're going to celebrate today that God is near. He's the King. He's everywhere. So jump up on your feet now and let's sing this song. Straight after the service, we've got virtual coffee. Please jump on board in the usual way and join that to catch up with friends. Tonight, as usual, is prayer and praise at eight o'clock. Again, the focus is going to be on Mark and Natalie. We'll hear lots from them and we'll be praying for them at different points. So please come and join that. Next part of the service now is going to be focused very much on Mark and Natalie's commissioning. We're going to hear from a number of different people, from them and others, before we have our Bible reading by Antonio and Alexia. We'll sing again before the sermon. Good morning. My name's Andrew, and I'm so excited to be sharing with you this morning, just briefly, uh, about our passion to see communities of Jesus, Jesus followers around the world. We are so excited that uh, Slade Church um, is partnering and helping to send Mark and Natalie to another part of the world to see God's kingdom through his church, the gospel uh, established there as well. I have to emphasize that um, we, we assist the local church of being the sending unit for uh, Mark and Natalie as they move to another part of the world. I'm very excited that you're able to do this with them as well. We do encourage you to continue to support them because in a very real way, you're the ones that send, you're the ones that support, you're the ones that financially help, you're the ones that spiritually support and pray for them as they go and um, 
you should be excited. We're excited that uh, we have this opportunity to work together to see God's kingdom established around the world as well. Thank you so much for doing this for Mark and Natalie as an extension of your ministry around the world. If I was with you in present, uh, actually with you physically present, I I'd be saying something like this. If you think God's calling you to help them, to stand with them, would you commit to that? Would you symbolise that right now by standing up? Uh, and maybe as I'm talking to you, your heart is stirred, that you know that you're meant to be part of their team, holding the tent ropes so they can forward establish uh, Jesus' church, Jesus' body around the world. Would you mentally, spiritually, in your hearts, stand with them from this day forwards as well? Thank you so much. God, I pray for the region of the Middle East, the land that you walked yourself, the land where your message has been a spirit to the world and your salvation has been fulfilled. Thank you, Lord, for the greatest missionary church in history here in Antioch, where we first has been called Christians. Have mercy, O Lord, in Gaza, as people there suffer from the corruption and war. Have mercy on those people who doesn't have a shelter, those people who lost family and loved ones. God, we know that your desire for Gaza is peace and joy, and we know that only you can bring that into this land. Please, Lord, open the eyes of those people who live there to give their hearts for you. Have mercy in Egypt, O Lord, as people there are suffering for their faith. Lord, we see people bombed and die. God, we know they are doing such things because they have not known the Father nor you. God, we pray that you meet up with those people and change their hearts as you change the heart of Paul and many other people. Have mercy in Syria, God. The war has caused many people to be exiled from their homes and families. People has been apart from their mothers and fathers. And brothers and sisters has become strangers in different places in the world. Those who live in a camps and those who have no shelter. Have mercy, O oh Lord, on those people who are outside their homes and on those people who are still living under the shadow of death. God, we pray that you will be with those people of Syria, so they never shake or panic, and bring peace in their hearts as you bring it in their land. Have mercy in Iraq, as we saw the corruption and war reach out many people who joined the ISIS. God, we also pray for the ISIS. Change their hearts, O Lord. Lead them to understand that your desire to all human race to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. God, we see that everything the enemy is doing in this region that he means for evil, distraction and death. But we also know that you can take all of this and turn it into a good. Bring life out of death because you are the only one who can bring life from what is dead. God, we thank you because you are loving God. You created us out of love. Your love and compassion for us is unimaginable. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.
Good morning. I'm Mark. I'm Natalie. Hello, my name is Amelia and I'm six. This is Amelia. Hi, I'm Hannah and I'm six. <laughs> and together as a family, we've been attending the Slade for the past eight years. It's been such a privilege and a blessing to get to know so many of you during that time. Over the past couple of years, we've really felt the Lord leading us to go and serve overseas, particularly in the Middle East region. There is such need for the people to hear the good news of Jesus. An opportunity has arisen for us to go serve. And this project is one where on one hand, it is going to be able to meet uh, people's physical needs. But more importantly, as we interact with people, as we build relationships with people through this project, it gives us a platform to share the good news with them. And so we have been preparing to go. We've been packing, deciding what stays, deciding what goes. And now we are ready and we are waiting to go. We would be thrilled and honoured for you to join us as we go to the Middle East. So how can you do that? Well, you can pray. Please pray for us and also please pray for the region. Also, stay in touch. We will be keep sending out regular updates, but we really want to hear from you individually and we will stay in touch with you. Thanks and God bless. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for Mark and Natalie. Thank you for their experiences and the way that you have equipped them so far. Lord, we thank you for their desire to serve you and to see other people reached with good news. We pray for them as they wait to travel to the Near East. Help them to be patient and to know that you will open the door when the time is right. We thank you for Hannah and Amelia. We pray for them in this time of transition. Lord, we ask that they will feel secure in their parents' love. We pray especially that homeschooling will go well. Lord, we pray for their adjustment as a family when they reach their new country. Help them to quickly feel at home. Lord, we know it's not easy to learn a new language and culture, so we ask that you would help Mark and Natalie as they begin language learning. We pray for all of them, Lord, that they will find good friends in their new home. Lord, thank you for their family and friends, both here in the UK and in Canada. Thank you for their church and for all the support that Mark and Natalie have received. Help them to get the right balance, Lord, um, of work and family time and communicating with folk back home too. Lord, when the challenges come, we pray that they will continue to draw close to you, to know that you've called them and that you will continue to equip them. May they know your love and your peace and your presence as they go forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, um, we just want to come and firstly to thank you for uh, Mark and Natalie and for the girls. And we thank you that you've brought them into our lives for this season. We thank you for the blessing that they've been to us at the Slade. And um, Heavenly Father, um, we, we pray that over this time that we too may have been a blessing to them. But as uh, they reach this next chapter in their lives, their, the next stage of their journey with you, um, as they move to serve you elsewhere overseas, Heavenly Father, we do just pray that you'd be with them. We pray, Lord, that um, you would prepare uh, them mentally, physically and spiritually, Lord, for this work. We do pray, Heavenly Father, that um, you would be with them and particularly um, in, in some practical needs such as language learning. Uh, we just ask, Lord, that... Um, uh, that this would go well and that you would supernaturally uh, give them uh, an ability to be able to quickly uh, communicate with the people um, that they'll be meeting um, and Heavenly Father also for the work that they'll be engaged with um, uh, in their new location. Heavenly Father we just pray that um, that uh, they would have quick learning, quick understanding for that and Heavenly Father we pray that in the coming weeks and months uh, that they would feel um, very much that they are exactly where you want them to be uh, and, and that they have that sense of being at the centre of your will. And we do ask, Lord, that you might um, give them the assurance of this 
uh, in opportunities that they have to to grow in their own faith, but also to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. So bless them now, we do pray, Lord. Amen. Father, we thank you uh, for Mark and Natalie and Hannah and Amelia. We thank you for their time with us. And Father, you know our hearts are going to ache as they go. But we're excited, Father, about where you are taking them. We pray that you will be with them in all the practicalities of passports and, and airports and uh, security checks as they go to their new um, place that you've called them to be. We pray that they would see that you have gone before them. We pray for the practicalities of finding a place to live, that that will be resolved quickly. We pray that that you will be near Hannah and Amelia as they will miss friends and family from the UK and Mark and Natalie too. We pray you give Mark and Natalie real wisdom as they care for and look after Hannah and Amelia in this big transition. And we pray that very soon that they will make new friends um, and uh, just get on well with people in the place that you've called them to and that they would have many opportunities to share about your son, Jesus. Amen. Today's reading is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 to 13. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you and when you pray do not keep on babbling like pagans for they think they will be heard because of their many words do not be like them for your father knows what you need before you ask of him carrying on from verse 9 this then is how you should pray our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one.
some things in life are obvious, aren't they? For example, eating junk food every day, not a good idea. But going for exercise every day, that is a good idea, unless while you're out walking, you fall down a manhole. And what about going for a job interview? Arriving early, good idea. But in the interview, not as the interviewee taking over and basically asking the panel all the questions, not a good idea. What about your tax return? It's a good idea to get it in early rather than trying to do it desperately the night before it's due. What about taking a driving test? It's obvious that you shouldn't overtake a fire engine on a blind bend. Now, here's the thing though. I know people for all those things that have not done the right and the obvious thing. Uh, some I know embarrassingly all too well. And when it comes to prayer, we know if we're Christians, it, it's so obvious because it really is a fabulous privilege to do. It's this amazing gift from God that we get to talk to the maker of the universe. That's what prayer is, talking to God. The Bible starts, the Bible finishes, and it's full of men and women doing what? Talking to God in various ways, calling out to him in times of need, crying out to him in times of desperate need, delighting in declaring his praises, commending God for his glorious greatness, confessing their sin and their shame to a holy God pleading for his mercy, asking for his grace, longing that he would listen to their pleas for others who are suffering and struggling, losing themselves in joyful adoration, telling God how much they love him, praying in the spirit. So praying until they're really praying, longing to hallow his name, asking for his kingdom to come, being obedient to his will here on earth, wanting it done, depending on him for all daily needs, always asking for the forgiveness of sin. You see, prayer isn't something, please understand this, Christian, it isn't something that we have got to do. Prayer is something that we get to do. What a privilege that God, despite being the almighty sovereign creator of the universe, he invites us into his presence to talk with him. And he's always ready to listen to us, no matter what we have to say or ask. Recently, Jane and I, my wife, we had the most appalling experience with an insurance company after our not very old fridge, well, the whole fridge door just literally fell off. Communicating with them was, well, you wouldn't believe it if I told you. After getting nowhere, we contacted the fridge manufacturer. They were also so appalled with the insurance company's treatment of us, they simply bypassed them and sent us a new fridge directly. When we talk to God, he never gives us the brush off. He never ignores us, lies to us, put us on endless hold, tells us he can't possibly help us. So when we pray to God for Mark and Natalie and Hannah and Amelia, he doesn't turn around and say to us, really, you're praying to me for them again? Oh, come on, I'm so busy. Just the opposite. He will love it if we pray to God for them because he is precious to them. What they're doing, he is thrilled with. They're going to share the good news about him. And so he loves it when we pray for them. For February, we're looking at the why, the what, the how, and when to pray. Because prayer is so necessary to us as individuals, but also as a church family. And on this day when we're setting aside, when we're commissioning Mark and Natalie to this special new work, our commitment to pray for them is our top 
priority as a church family because we really do believe that prayer changes things and even more than that we believe that prayer changes us when we engage in it and changes us for the better it's been God's gift and means to his people to call on him ever since he created us prayer was his idea not ours he loves it when we ask him for help and his intervention because as our loving Heavenly Father, that's what he wants to do. Remember I said some things in life are obvious. So prayer to the Christian, it's obvious that it's a precious gift to be used. It's given us by God to help us do absolutely everything that we need. The church has had a big, big refurb recently that you'll know about. Imagine if the builders turned up on day one and every day without any tools. They wouldn't have got anywhere. Prayer for us as Christians is where we get our power. It's where we get our strength. It's where we get our help and our wisdom and our leading. It's both humbling and encouraging. As we cry out to God, it reminds us how utterly dependent we are on him for everything. But he wants us to know that because then he then lovingly, generously, happily comes and he meets our needs as we ask him. Jesus himself told his disciples, without me, you can do, you can do what? A few things, half the things. Without me, you can do nothing. Wow. Maybe you've been wondering why you've run into a few difficulties recently. Is it because you've been doing things in your own strength and not going to God in prayer? Have you ever seen a helpless three-month-old baby trying to change their own nappy, feed themselves, give themselves a bath before putting themselves to bed? It's okay admitting our helplessness and weakness to God. In fact, despite that being a humbling thing, it's a crucial thing. It's a very freeing thing. Mark and Natalie, this big new venture that you're embarking on, please remember, without Jesus, you can do nothing. And let's remember that as a church family, you know, and maybe we're wondering how often should we be praying for them? Now, not only in the Bible, but also church history teaches us that godly men and women who got great stuff done for God, they had such a high view of prayer. Listening at home, can you guess who said these things from church history? Firstly, someone from the 16th century. Prayer is not overcoming God's reluctance, but laying hold on his willingness. Wonderful. Actually, I'm not going to give you the answers to who said these things until this evening. We'll give them out on prayer and praise, okay? Someone from the 17th century. Prayer delights God's ear. It melts his heart. Wow. 18th century. Prayer is where the action is. 19th century. The value of prayer is precious beyond all price. Never, never neglect it. And then one from the 20th century, very relevant for the 21st century as well and for us and a quite a different one. To get a nation back on its feet, it first must get down on its knees. But you all begs the question, we know, don't we, if we're God's people, we know how important prayer is. So why don't we do it as much? Well, if you want a crude assessment of, of, of me, and me, this is someone who's perhaps different from you because I am paid as a full-time gospel worker to put aside special amounts of prayer that, that you haven't got time to do. When, when, when I don't pray enough, it, it's very simply because I'm either stupid or sinful or both. But for others of you, and you've got very pressured lives, distracted lives, some of you, I know that. 
uh, and you're brought up in a variety of different homes spiritually and you're from a different generation what well, why is it that you don't pray as much as you should and and i think this is probably one of the key reasons it's simply because we've either forgotten or we've lost sight of just how wonderful and a priv uh, and wonderful a privilege prayer is We've forgotten that prayer really does change things. We've forgotten that prayer does change and bless us. I think we should just try and draw up as a church a list of all the answers to prayer we've had since the beginning of this COVID crisis. What a difficult time. And yet what answers to prayer we've seen. I mean, how on earth could Mark and Natalie, from the beginning of COVID, get to a place where now they're ready to go? Because of prayer. We really do have a wonderful prayer answer in God. But in focusing today on why we should pray especially, I want to answer it according to Jesus' own prayerful example and his teaching on prayer. We know that we need to pray. That, that is obvious. But so did Jesus, our perfect King and Saviour. And my point is this. If Jesus, the Son of God, the spotless Lamb of God, if he knew he needed to pray, what a massively helpful lesson that is to all of us that we most definitely need to pray in our weaknesses, in our frailty, in our failings. Mark 1 verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Jesus knew he couldn't possibly do all that was planned for him without spending serious time with his Father, asking for wisdom and solace and strength. Luke 5 verse 16, But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. On a number of occasions, the disciples had no idea where Jesus was and they came looking for him and they found him praying. And they burst in and they say, Everyone's looking for you. Everyone needs you. What are you doing? Jesus, as well as knowing that he needed to be praying for himself, he was teaching the disciples a very important lesson, that what he was doing was of primary importance, and so it should be for all disciples of Jesus. Imagine asking Mark and Natalie whether they're going to be making prayer a priority in their work. And then them saying something like this, well, we, we, we've been studying some new techniques actually and, 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 and we know quite well that well, a, a lot of people in the past have, have you know, taken prayer as a real priority, but, but we don't think we, we need to use it anymore. We, we found some great new methods and techniques. Well, a couple of things would happen very quickly. The organisation that they're representing would want an emergency meeting with them and so would us as church leaders. We'd want to talk to them and say, so you think that you know better than Jesus? Uh, okay, let's, uh, let's maybe talk about that. No way. Like Jesus, they know, as all of us know, that to attempt anything for God and for his glory is a most difficult task because we have a vicious and a real enemy out there in the devil. One who is definite, he's real. And he has supernatural powers. And he is trying to thwart God's people at every possible attempt when they seek to serve him and share the good news about him especially. The devil's first main priority is to cut Christians off from our supply source of strength, help and wisdom. Recently I watched a fascinating documentary on the Dam Busters. Remember where the Royal Air Force attacked German dams in 1943? 
It was the 617 Squadron, and they used incredibly bouncing bombs. But why? To demoralise the enemy, to damage crucial infrastructure that was essential to producing supplies and weapons uh, for the soldiers out there on the front line. It was to damage and halt their fighting ability. This is exactly what Satan is trying to do to us. He wants to cut the supply line to all our resources of power, wisdom and peace and comfort and weapons that God will amply supply if we go to him asking in prayer. So no wonder we find it tough to pray. We've got a vicious but incredibly cunning enemy in the devil who fights with all his worth to stop us praying. You know he's so clever, he may even convince you uh, like this perhaps. Oh, you've recently sent a gift to Mark and Natalie or uh, later on you write them a really encouraging letter and you think, well, that's, that's more than enough. Surely I don't need to pray for them as well. Well, please do those lovely, nice things. But make sure you're praying for them first and foremost. And pray, pray for their praying as they go into a completely new and, and different environment that they've got to adapt to. Pray for their own prayers as individuals. Pray for their praying as a couple. Pray for their praying as a family with Hannah and Amelia. They're going to have many big challenges ahead. They know that. And yet prayer is given to us, whereby we can talk to God on their behalf, asking that they'll be given peace, wisdom and strength. Are you lacking in any of those things, peace, wisdom and strength? Is it because we forgot how vital prayer is and that we can go to God and ask for those things? Maybe you say, but I'm so busy. Well, maybe you are. But can I guarantee every single one of us, none of us has ever had a greater workload than our Saviour Jesus had. But he still made prayer a priority. He knew that he couldn't do anything without praying. Martin Luther, the 16th century reformer, he also knew this and he said once when he was asked about what he had to do today, he replied, I have so much to do today that I'm going to need to spend the first three hours in prayer in order to be able to get it all done. Jesus prayed on his own. So get alone and pray. He prayed with his friends. So pray with your friends. He prayed at the biggest meal ever, the feeding of the 5,000, remember. So pray at meal times. He prayed in the middle of the day. He prayed in the middle of the night. So use any and every opportunity to pray when needs arise and burdens are placed on your hearts. Maybe you simply just want to thank him. Do it as you're walking to the co-op. Pray for people that you're burdened about while you're waiting at the bus stop, while you're lying awake in bed, just before an important meeting or conversation. Commit it to God. Ask for his help. Pray first thing in the day, last thing at night, committing everything into his hands. And notice how Jesus prayed during his most extreme times of trial. He prayed when he was tempted in the desert. He prayed when he was in Gethsemane. Oh, how he prayed there. He prayed when he was even on the cross. And incredibly, when he was on the cross, what was he praying about? He was praying for others. You might think, well, to pray for Mark and Natalie will, will be great, but when I get round to it, when I get dealt with all the problems in my own life, no even in needs of real trial. We must think about others and, and pray for them. It blesses us as well. Now, time has defeated us because it, it's been, of course, a very special and important service for us today. Um, because I haven't even touched yet on what Jesus taught about prayer, just thought about his example, uh, showing us why prayer is so precious. But over the next three weeks, we're, we're going to go deeper into this and we'll really grab hold of some Bible passages to help us. 
But just in closing, last week we heard of the most wonderful of friends that's ours in Jesus. Of course, because he even laid down his life for us. But you know what? Far, far more than that. He didn't just forgive us our sins and that was it. No, he did that to draw us into a relationship with him and his Father in heaven. He did that so that the Holy Spirit might come and dwell within us. One last reason why we know, according to Jesus' example, why prayer is so precious and important. Jesus, right now, is still praying for you and me. We heard that a couple of weeks ago in a sermon. That's what he's doing. He's praying for us as we're listening to this. And I'm sure one of the things he's praying about for all of us now is, please, Father God, would you let that church family at the Slade know how precious prayer is? Would you remind them that it's a free gift? It's a privilege at their disposal. Would you remind them that I'm always ready here to listen, willing to give them the help and the strength that they need? Remind them that when I said, come to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, that I meant it and I still mean it today. A quote to finish with from Corrie ten Boom. She was a Dutch lady, remarkable lady of faith and courage who helped rescue Jews during World War II. She asked a question about prayer and it's a question for all of us. Is prayer your steering wheel or is it your spare wheel? It's quaint, isn't it? But it's fantastic and it's packed with poignant truth. Let's make prayer in 2021 nothing less than a constant priority for every single one of us. Mark and Natalie know, yes, I hope that we love them as a church. Hopefully they also know that we're going to keep in touch with them as a church. Hopefully they also know that we're going to provide for different needs they have. But oh, let's make sure more than anything that they know that we're praying for them. Of course, come back again this evening and we'll be doing a lot more of that for them. Let's never forget our dearest friend the one who's praying for us right now the one who calls us to pray to him we're going to close our service now by singing a wonderful old hymn what a friend we have in jesus <laughs> No
That's the close of our service. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Lord God, how wonderfully true that your Son, Jesus, is this incredible friend that we have. A friend that we can take all our needs, concerns and burdens to. And we pray, please, Lord God, would you, would you remind us again of this fabulous opportunity that prayer is. Running to you, going to you, pouring out our hearts, asking you for the things that we're most burdened about. Lord, we pray, please, that you will be with us all today. Would you bring us back again this evening, if possible, uh, to continue this special commissioning day for Mark and Natalie. We bring our prayers in the wonderful and precious name of Jesus. Amen. So please, be great to see you this evening if you can join us. Have a great day, but wrap up warm. <laughs>